If you're thinking about moving to the Southern Oregon coast, this video is for you, especially if you've never been to the area. I'm going to break down some of the bigger towns, what they have to offer, what some of the differences are, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a much better feel for how the Southern Oregon coast is laid out. All that starts now. Seth Marchant with Home Team Brokers here. Welcome back to the channel, or if you're new to this channel, living on the Oregon coast and you'd like to know more about what it's like to live on the Oregon coast, make sure and hit the subscribe button. Also tap the bell, that way you'll be notified every week when we drop a new video. We get people reaching out to us all the time that want to move along the Oregon coast. And as licensed brokers, as much as we like making these videos, we'd love to help you move here. If you're somebody that wants to take the next steps, if you have questions about moving to the Oregon coast, you can call, text, email, or click the link below in the description of this video if you want to get into our calendar and schedule a Zoom call, typically best for people coming from outside of the state. All right, first, where is the Southern Oregon coast? How is it broken down? There's no uh, official breakdown of the central, the northern, the Southern Oregon coast. The way I had it broken down is uh, for the Northern Oregon coast, we did uh, unboxing the Northern Oregon coast from Astoria to Tillamook. You can check that video out here if you want to. And then we're gonna go, uh, when we do Central Oregon coast, we'll cover a Tillamook and then to Coos Bay. So we're gonna do Coos Bay to Brookings for the Southern Oregon coast. You could maybe throw uh, Reed Sport or um, some of these towns in the Southern Oregon coast. Again, it's, it's debatable, but for sure, once you get down to this section of the uh, Oregon coast, you definitely uh, it has more of a southern feel to it. Now, starting with uh, Coos Bay, North Bend, the area is oftentimes referred to Coos Bay as Coos Bay or just the Coos Bay, North Bend area. There's about 10,000 people in North Bend, about 50% more than that, maybe 15 or 16,000 people in Coos Bay. So this is the most populous area of the entire Oregon coast. It's also one of the least expensive so if you're looking for something affordable, you're going to find a lot of inventory around here. And average home prices right now, as it stands, winter 2023, around the mid threes. A lot of other stuff around the Oregon coast is going to be closer to the fives. Now, these two towns, North Bend and Coos Bay, are very similar. It doesn't really feel a whole lot different up here in North Bend uh, than it does in Coos Bay. And as you can see, they're both right along the 101. Downtown North Bend is right here. Downtown Coos Bay is right here. And if you're driving along this 101, it's kind of like a, a Lincoln City, if you will, kind of a long stretch where it doesn't really necessarily feel like two separate towns. Do you have the Southwest Oregon Regional Airport up here? which uh, typically has uh, flights to SFO, and I think they might do Denver right now. They're usually just offering one or two flights. They've, they've been trying to include more offerings over the, year, but, uh, over the years, but um, right now they're just going to have one or two flights. If you've never been to Coos Bay before and you want to check it out, definitely find somewhere around here and just come and park downtown. I would recommend uh, going right here to the end of a Anderson Avenue and uh, walking this boardwalk uh, right here. There's uh, maybe about a mile or so of boardwalk, some cool stuff to look at, but kind of walking the boardwalk right here and then the downtown right here will really give you a, a, a sense and like a feel for what the Coos Bay North Bend area is like. As you can see, you've got a handful of restaurants, quite a few restaurants here, lots of choices. Again, being the more populous of the Oregon coast, you're going to find a lot more food and shopping options. The Bay Area Hospital is right here. So as far as hospitals go, your next closest hospital is going to be south in uh, Gold Beach, and we'll get to that in just a moment, and then north uh, in Florence, which is uh, maybe an hour or so north of uh, Coos Bay. This is where kind of most of your shopping is also going to end. You've got a Walmart here. There's a Fred Meyer down here. There's a Safeway down here. There's also a Safeway up over here. Uh, in North Bend. So beyond the Coos Bay North Bend area, once you get down into the rest of the Southern Oregon coast, you're looking at kind of like mom and pop shops like Ray's uh, for your grocery shopping. There is a Fred Meyer in Brookings. If you're not familiar with Fred Meyer, if you're from out of state, uh, Fred Meyer is very similar to a Walmart. So a lot of the Southern Oregon coast from Coos Bay to Brookings right here, a lot of your shopping, a lot of your grocery shopping is going to be smaller, kind of mom and pop. If you're visiting the area for the first time, aside from visiting downtown Coos Bay to get a feel for the area, you do have some uh, residential, you do have some neighborhoods on the other side of the bay, uh, all kind of all along the bay here. And so if you wanted some water views, 
um, this would probably be one of the better places where you're going to find more options, more selection, more inventory. But uh, one thing you probably want to do, this over here, Shore Acres State Park, Cape Arago State Park, um, Sunset Bay State Park, this entire stretch is definitely worth checking out if you've never been to this area before. Probably some of the more scenic um, spots along the entire Oregon coast. There's a couple great places to go photograph. If, if you're a photographer, one really popular spot here at Shore Acres. Let's see if I can put a... Uh, we can find a little spot right here to take a look. Really cool beach right here. Uh, usually not too busy when I've been down there. This rock right here, you see a lot of photographs from the Oregon coast of like when you have some really big tides, like the king tides uh, coming in. And this rock, when you get the right waves, makes an incredible splash right there that you see a lot of photographers going down and taking pictures of. Uh, but this entire stretch right here, along the Cape Arago Highway is definitely worth checking out. Uh, if you like seafood, I would also do this. I would go down to Charleston and uh, go down to the marina. I'm sure why this doesn't uh, show up. Here, this building right here, just off the dock, this is uh, the Fisherman's Wharf. So you can go buy uh, seafood in here, like a crab, and then, uh, can't quite tell, but the, these are picnic tables right here. Go buy some fresh seafood, come out on the dock, sit down at the picnic table, usually a seal that will come up and, uh, and bug you. Um, but this is, this is a great little spot to check out if you just want to maybe go grab some seafood and you're just passing through the area. You can see um, you do have a fair amount of neighborhoods around here too. Pretty quiet though. Definitely going to be different over here down in a Charleston than it is going to be in a, a Coos Bay or North Bend. A lot more bustling, a lot more traffic, a lot more congestion up here on the Oregon coast, uh, most populous town. Also to one thing that you're gonna see, Coos Bay, North Bend, the crime rate does tend to be higher here than probably I think anywhere else along the Oregon coast. Just remember it is all relative. If you're comparing crime along the Oregon coast to say like a Portland or an LA or San Francisco, it's probably gonna feel a relatively low to you despite what you might read online. All right, south of Coos Bay is going to be Bandon. Bandon's known for a couple things. They are known for Bandon Dunes Golf Resort. This is a world-renowned golf resort. If you're a golfer, it's probably on the bucket list for you. Bandon is also known for, this is where you really kind of start getting into, and maybe actually that area that I mentioned uh, just to the nor north, Cape Arago up here. This is where you kind of really start getting away from the sandy, long stretches of beach that you see along the northern Oregon coast and the central Oregon coast and start to get into those really dramatic rock formations. You do have a really great beach uh, here in Bandon, but check out some of these rock formations. This is kind of uh, what the southern Oregon coast is known for, and especially Bandon. If you're going to Bandon, you're going to want to go. The Old Town downtown is right here. Gonna see a lot of people right here checking out the Bandon Fish Market and Tony's Crab Shack. Throw a little guy down there real quick. So, um, so Google Maps must have come by uh, on like a, a Tuesday morning or something like this. When it's peak season, the line for these two places uh, is out the door. But this entire old town downtown of Bandon, there's a handful of great restaurants down here. Great spot to just walk take a little walk around and get to know the town a little bit more. Face Rock Creamery, right up the street off the 101, also very popular. And then just come check out the beach down here somewhere. As far as houses go, a little bit more expensive in Bandon. Your average house is probably gonna be closer to the higher fives, maybe low sixes. Fair amount of new construction right now in Bandon, which you don't see um, along the Oregon coast, and especially along the Southern Oregon coast, not as many builders. Um, along the southern Oregon coast. If you want to kind of just get a feel for the area and check out this neighborhood, definitely off the 101. There's a road right here. Take this 4th Street to Ocean Drive over here, Beach Loop Road right here. This road right here kind of gives you a feel for kind of quintessential Bandon. Be able to see some of the real estate and some of the views that uh, some of these houses get right here. A lot of this is going to be elevated, as you can kind of see. So not too many homes actually on um, or right there on the beach, beachfront. These houses are sitting, you know, 10, 20, 30 feet up above the ocean. So if you're somebody that's worried about uh, tsunamis, this also might be a good spot for you. There's probably about 2,500 or so people that live here. So Bandon is a small area. It does have kind of a small town feel to it. 
really known for uh, its rugged beauty. Moving south of Bandon, and if uh, you see any other towns uh, to like something like this, like a den, like a little town like this, um, just some little unincorporated area that, uh, that there's there's nothing there. There's only about you know four or five towns. Um, on the southern Oregon coast that uh, have over about a thousand people or so. Port Orford is going to be the next one, probably coming in right at about a thousand people. Here's one of these uh, rays. This is what I mentioned. Uh, this is what I meant when I was uh, saying mom and uh, pop grocery stores. Um, and these grocery stores are fine, but it, you know they're smaller, so it's not a new season, not a Safeway or Albertsons or anything like that. When you're going through Port Orford, it's only going to take you a few minutes to drive through town. If you're going to stop, you're going to want to stop right here. There's a great viewpoint, uh, the parking lot right here. Great viewpoint uh, that really kind of gives you just unobstructed views for miles and miles down the southern Oregon coast. So you can see pretty far. Also might come down to the port right down here. Check out some of the fishermen uh, unloading their catch. Good little spot right here if you want to get some oyster shooters and get a drink. One of our viewers pointed out South Coast Tours not too long ago. Haven't uh, taken a tour with them, but as you can see, very highly rated. Uh, so if you want to get out on the water, maybe check out South Coast Tours. But that's going to be it for uh, Port Orford. Um, average home price is a little bit lower there too, probably in the low 400s. Don't get a ton of people looking at Port Orford, kind of a smaller, sleepier town. A whole lot that they're known for. Um, these parks up here are really great. I wouldn't say, you know, there's so many great parks along the southern or along the Oregon coast, not just the southern Oregon coast, that uh, take you a long time if you want to stop at all of them. So. I don't know if this is a must-see like a Cape Arago, like up in Coos Bay, but definitely a cool place if you have the time to stop. They had, Cape uh, Blanco State Park used to have a really great musical uh, music festival every year uh, that COVID killed. Uh, I've heard that's going to come back next year, which is kind of unique. You don't you don't usually have the, like big music fest festivals in these kind of areas that are so low population, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. You know, down here on the southern Oregon coast around Port Orford, I mean, you're you're drawing, like, you're going to be drawing people from Grants Pass, Medford, you know, Roseburg. And as you can kind of see, there is no straight shot from the 5 over to the 101 here on the southern Oregon coast. So if you want to visit places like Port Orford, Gold Beach, Brookings, coming from Grants Pass, Medford, Ashland, which is where most of the population is in southern Oregon, you have to go down through California first and then up or up the I-5 and cut over here. Um, off the 42 uh, over to Bandon, which either way, depending on where you're coming from, you're looking at like roughly three hours, you know, to get somewhere over here from Southern Oregon over to the Oregon coast. So it's not a quick trip. There's not a ton of population to really to support a big music festival um, over here in Cape Blanco. So just kind of a cool, unique thing. I really see too much. Only reason I pointed out. All right, moving along here down to next is going to be Gold Beach and Ofer, Nasika Beach, handful of houses here, you know, handful of people that live in Ofer. Nasika Beach is kind of a cool little area. There's there's maybe three or 400 people down here. Handful of waterfront homes. Actually is a little market in Delhi. Actually, funny story about this little market, Nasika Beach Market. That's actually where we met uh, living on the Oregon coast. When I say we, it's where we actually met up with our very first lead from this uh, YouTube channel, which feels like so long ago now. So most of your population down here is going to be right here on the other side of the Rogue River in Gold Beach. It's about 2,500 people or so. You can see there's the Curry General Hospital. Again, so your hospital options on the southern Oregon coast is going to be right here in Gold Beach and then North Bend Coos Bay right up here. And then again, beyond that is going to be Florence. So for the most part, you're probably not going to be beyond an hour or so uh, away from a hospital if you're in the southern Oregon coast, maybe closer to half an hour, which is kind of usually what people want to stay within. So Gold Beach, I would definitely describe as a little bit more of a sleepy town. Got a couple places for dinner, a couple places for lunch, a couple places to get coffee. Uh, some of these places over the years in Gold Beach have been seasonal, so uh, they might not be open in the, uh, the winter time. So that's kind of what you're looking at in Gold Beach very much a, a seasonal town set right at the ro uh, mouth of the rogue river i would say jerry's rogue jets for all of the different types of tours and things you could see along the oregon coast this is probably one of the best um, we'll maybe have to put together a list of uh, things to do on the oregon coast someday if i were to make a list though probably put this in my top five they offer a couple different trips up the rogue river but the farthest trip goes all the way to agnes right here 
and you'll stop and have lunch. It's changed over the years, but uh, either at Singing Springs Resort or Cougar Lane Lodge. It's like maybe a six or seven hour trip um, up the river and then back. Probably see a lot of wildlife. Uh, I've done it half a dozen times. You usually see bears when you go. Again, this section of or this part of Oregon right here, the Rogue National Forest is one of the re most remote parts of all of Oregon. Gold Beach also does uh, have a some pretty good beaches, as you might imagine. This entire stretch right here, great beach, great for beach coming. The stretch up here, once you start getting into Nisika, it's going to go all the way to Ophir. You can actually walk uh, Nisika to Ophir. I'm not sure how many miles that is. I don't know, maybe, maybe 8, 9, 10 miles here. Only thing you're going to run into this creek right here, Utra Creek. Uh, has really varied over the years as far as where it makes its way to the ocean and how wide it can get. Sometimes uh, you might have to uh, take the shoes off and, and roll up the pants to get past Utrecht Creek. But Gold Beach has, so if you like beaches, there's going to be a lot of beach to walk along Gold Beach. Other than that, it's a pretty sleepy town. There's probably not a whole lot to do with the exception of all the things that you can do to, uh, to get outside and explore. Now beyond Gold Beach, we'll head south to the last town here and kind of disregard some of these small unincorporated areas. And before we get to Brookings, actually, definitely mention Samuel H. Boardman State Scenic Corridor. So this section right here, this kind of little section right here, some people say is the most scenic part of the entire Oregon coast. Again, there's going to be a lot of uh, really dramatic rock for formations. It's going to be really remote along here. There's not a lot of access along here. This is also probably the reason why this area is very popular. This secret beach right here, this location right here, which I can remember doesn't feel that long ago that this didn't actually even have a pin on Google. Neither did the trailhead. If you wanted to find the trailhead of the secret beach, you'd have to go digging through like the hiking forums uh, for the state of Oregon to find somebody that will give you some sort of like ambiguous uh, descriptions about mile markers and parking on the side of the road and things like that. Whereas now you can just uh, follow Google. So not quite the secret that it used to be, but it is a it is kind of a little, it is a little bit difficult uh, to get there. So you might not commonly see people there, um, despite it being marked on Google. But this entire area, if you can go explore this area a little bit, if you're looking for something, if you're looking to get one of those Southern Oregon photographs that maybe you see online, this is going to be the place to do it. I would say just plan in advance because a lot of actually the access getting actually somewhere to the coast where you can actually see stuff from the 101 there's not a lot of places to park along here and there's not a lot of actual trails you know the trails along here are just you know are trails that are not managed by the parks department you know but actually just trails that the, that the people are just coming to check out these viewpoints are making all right so beyond uh samuel boardman down into brookings now brookings is one of the more popular places that people are thinking to move along the Oregon coast is known as the banana belt of the Oregon coast. If you've ever heard of the Brookings effect or the Chetco after the Chetco River, the Chetco effect is a stream of warm air that comes up uh, from California actually and makes its way kind of up the Chetco right here. And what you can sometimes find is it will sometimes be warmer in Brookings than it will be in a Crescent City. Brookings does get a fair amount of days in the 80s where the Oregon coast, pretty much the rest of the Oregon coast, you're not getting too many days in the 80s. A lot of days in the 70s in the summertime. Beyond that, a lot of days in the 60s. The rest of the year, you're like 30s to 40s to 50s. You also do have a, like a full few more months uh, of sunshine every day in Brookings than you do like compared to like Astoria and the northern Oregon coast. It's a lot more heat and sun in Brookings. That is one thing that attracts a lot of people to this area. And a lot of people coming to escape some of the extreme heat from California, from Texas, from Arizona, this climate being a lot more temperate. There's uh, just under maybe 7,000 people or so in Brookings, all kind of condensed around this area right here. Harbor is a separate town. Uh, there's a couple thousand people right here. I think most people just uh, think of the entire area, though, as Brookings or, or hyphenated Brookings Harbor. And then you do have uh, some houses kind of out here just outside of town as well maybe 500 to 1,000 people or so kind of living back up here with some elevation uh, in the hills back here. The average homes in uh, Brookings, somewhere in the low to mid fives. You're going to find some really incredible houses. 
oceanfront right here that are going to be multi-million dollar properties. You're also going to find a fair amount of manufactured homes in Brookings. Just driving around Brookings, you'll probably know that there's a fair amount of manufactured homes. So as far as real estate, you can kind of find everything in Brookings. A fair amount of good restaurants here. Definitely feels bigger and more lively and like there's more going on in Brookings than it does compared to Gold Beach. One thing to note about Brookings, if you do like to have a lot of beach, if you are a beach comer, there's not a ton of sandy beach in Brookings, not as much as a Gold Beach or a lot of places really north of it. You can see these rocky landscapes all by downtown Brookings, right? Just because you see beach too doesn't necessarily mean that you always have access. And there's gonna be a few places that you're just not gonna be able to access uh, the beach along here. Harris Beach uh, probably being the most popular beach uh, for Brookings. So I hope that gives you kind of a little bit of a, a better feel for how the Southern Oregon coast is broken down. If you have questions about these towns, if you have questions about moving to the Southern Oregon coast or really anywhere else in Oregon, we're happy to help. You can call us, text us, email us, or click the link below if you want to schedule a Zoom with us. And if this video helped you, give us a thumbs up. lets us know we're doing a good job. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure and subscribe. You can also comment, too, if you want to weigh in. A lot of people like to comment in these videos. If you want to comment with a question or just give your thoughts on the Southern Oregon coast, maybe point out something that you think is cool or important, feel free to do so in the comments. Until next time, take care, everyone.